Hey everybody, it's Gil from the Sailing Vessel Last Affair. And today I want to show you a little bit about how we refinish the drawers and the varnish in the inside of our boat. Uh, the inside of the boat is teak trim with mahogany. Most of it is um, a, a mahogany veneer over the top of marine grade plywood. Uh, you'll think you'll find that in most of the older vintage boats, um, you know, middle of the run, not top of the line, not low end line. Um, in our case, we've taken the drawers and doors out of the owner's stateroom and we've taken them into our garage. We have uh, begun sanding them so all of these units at this point have been sanded with 150 grit sandpaper followed by 220 grit sandpaper um, wiped off with a, a dry towel and then ultimately a tack cloth and then we went ahead and sealed the wood um, which was a, a coat of a thin down varnish so we used the same varnish that we're going to varnish with two parts varnish to one part thinner and we just did a light coat on that because it goes in real nice and seals the wood. Um, and then and then we've been putting uh, subsequent coats on. So we are up to our fourth coat, and today I'm going to be putting the fifth coat on. And I thought I'd show you some of the items that ultimately you'll um, you'll need for this project. So a couple of things. Uh, we happen to be using Helms uh, Helmsman spar varnish. We like the clear gloss for that look, so we're using that. Um, definitely need a tack cloth. If you don't have one, it's worth the whopping $1.99 at the hardware store. Uh, it's great for getting off all the dust and dirt after sanding. Foam brush. And um, 320 grit sandpaper on a sanding block. Okay, so we have here a piece of, uh, a piece of one of the floorboards. We wanted to test out what this was going to look like before we refinish the entire boat. And again, I mentioned that we have several coats down here already. So the first thing to do, uh, this is dry, it's, uh, we did this last coat um, yesterday. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a sanding block and 320 grit sandpaper. Not sand very hard, with the grain. And this is really just a matter of knocking down the bumps that are in the varnish and getting that glass-like smooth finish. If you've ever looked into varnish and you see it looks sort of like a mirror finish, this is how you ultimately achieve it, and it's layering and layering of that varnish. So you can see it has a bit of a milky white color as it uh, as it sort of scuffed up some of that um, that varnish. We'll take our tack cloth and, and be careful; these are absolutely um, sticky when you first get them. And we'll just wipe this down with the grain. And again, the idea here is we're just removing some of that sanded off dust that we had. It still has a little bit of a milky white finish in some of the areas, but you can see it's uh, it's kind of ready to go at this point. So the next step is I'm going to um, I'm going to actually pause the tape. I'm going to sand the surfaces of everything we have because we have uh, five drawers, a door, um, three floor panels, a couple of pieces of teak trim, and a new bulkhead wall that I made for uh, for the rear uh, stateroom. So uh, I'm going to sand everything, sand all the pieces down, and uh, and we're about to put our first coat on. So again, I like these little foam brushes from uh, from Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store. They work really well for. Uh, for applying the varnish in, no cleaning, you just throw the things away after each coat, which is wonderful. So, again, I'm going to start with, uh, this is just straight varnish, and um, and again, I'm going to just kind of brush it on here, and then work the work the strokes, uh, the brush strokes out of it. So first we, we layer it on, a little bit thick along the edge, at the far side, and now we'll do the same with this side. Um, there's definitely an approach here. I'm, this is such a small piece, I'm just going with the grain. But there's definitely a, a recommended approach when you're doing large pieces of wood or large sections that you should, uh, you should go roll it on or brush it on against the grain and then use another brush to smooth it out. You want to feather it. So really all I'm doing is lightly coming down in contact with the wood, go right off the edge so I don't end up with a lip, turn around doing the same thing off the other side. And again, this is after the, uh, the whole thing's been coated with varnish, and it's really just a matter of taking down the bumps. And I am brushing very lightly. Ultimately, I don't want to take the varnish up. I really want to leave a layer down here. And again, you can see the, uh, the, the shininess that it gets when it's wet. As we get up to eight or ten coats of varnish after sanding directly down from wood, this will start to look almost like wood encased in glass, and it should have a really beautiful look. So I have here one of the uh, faces to uh, an access panel in the rear stateroom, uh, mainly at uh, storage under the under the curve of the hull and uh, and air conditioning ducts in here. You can kind of see a bit of a blemish here. This is a, a high spot that was on the varnish. So when I sanded this down, you kind of got that even, and you see the uh, you see the, the discoloration. As long as you do a light sanding between coats, that will not show up after it's done. Um, this piece here, be a little tricky because I am doing the sides as well. So again, I will start here. 
with um, going around each side. Start with the long sides, which unfortunately may be out of the camera view. Uh, and then go to the long sides here in just a second. So now it's to the long sides. And, uh, you know, i, I, I got to point out, I'm brushing this directly out of the can. This, it's absolutely not recommended you do that. Uh, when you shake a can or you stir a can, you get air bubbles in it. And you really should uh, pour your varnish from whatever your, your storage can is, in my case the actual can itself, into a small cup. And that's where you should be painting from and, and dipping from. Um, it's definitely a cleaner way to do it. Unfortunately, I didn't want to have the waste, given I'm just doing these couple of pieces here. So I'm not doing that. I, I definitely want to point it out, because if you're doing large sections or you're doing down on your interior of your boat, it will certainly lead to a better finish if you do it that way. All right. On these, I'm going to get a little bit inside here. Uh, it's tough to get the brush strokes out, so I'm going very light in there. I will uh, add just a tad more varnish, go over the top edge. And what I found where these handles are is if I lightly touch in here and stroke outward to get rid of the brush strokes and then do the same on the other side and then make sure my strokes go the whole length of the wood it seems to take out the majority of those brush strokes that said I'm seeing little sections here where I didn't cover good so I'll make that correction and then repeat that process I just did to feather that out so there you have another drawer face uh, pretty simple to do uh, to do these five drawers this t this top I have here in front of me the floor section two pieces of trim a small bulkhead wall uh, a, a paper towel or towel rack and also um, a full-size door into the stateroom it takes about 30 minutes to come in here lightly sand them wipe them off with a tack cloth and then apply the finishes okay I want to go ahead and show this this I mentioned before that a lot of times it's um, a lot of times a boat's going to be finished in marine grade plywood with a laminate over top. This is a bulkhead wall that I, I had to re refix. It goes right into the back side of the stateroom. And as you can see, it's just marine grade plywood, a thin veneer that gets uh, it's a, an adhesive with contact cement, put it right on top, trim it, sand it, and from the front, looks great. From the back, when this is done, I'll, uh, I'll put a, a slight coat of um, bilge paint on the back of it along with, um, uh, with epoxy just to keep it waterproof. I won't do that until I install it in the hull because I want to sort of do that right along the edge of the, of the hull itself. So I'm going to go ahead and varnish this piece as well. You can see it's sanded. It's got some of those scuff marks on it. And um, a slightly larger piece, as I mentioned before, you want to really start out pretty liberal with the varnish as you, uh, as you put some coating on here. And then we can spread it around and get the brush marks out of it here in just a minute. You'll notice I'm not always going with the grain. Sometimes it's easier along the edges to go across the grain. As long as we smooth out the edges, it won't be an issue. Alright, getting our coverage here. And you can see how those light spots I was mentioning from the dust from the sandpaper just go right away as soon as you put this other coat on here so don't don't worry when you sand it and you start to get nervous that you're going to leave a a mark and it's not going to look good you can always float in some more varnish to to correct that okay now I have adequate coverage and it's time to time to smooth this they call these um they're called holidays when you have a spot where there's a little skip in the work there Kind of a clever name. So just like before, I'm going to start here, stroke along the grain, and lightly blend it in. And I always want to run my brush off the edge of the wood, not come onto it, so I don't have a buildup of a buildup of varnish at the edge that runs down the sides. Especially with something like this, where it's a good tight fit to where it goes. If you're not sure how it looks, sometimes just holding it up at an angle at the light lets you see any blemishes. I see one right here. See a blemish? It's one of those little holidays. I can see the, the skip mark there. Again, just blend it in real nice and we're set. Okay, the last piece I'll demonstrate on is this door. Same approach here as everywhere else.
one of the things I found doing these raised panels is it's best to run along the uh, across the grain in this edge. So if you don't you don't build up a bunch of varnish and make a thick lip there, we can always blend it in here in a moment. So I'm going to do that on that side and on this side. Get good coverage there. And I know I have coverage because where I sanded it's dull and now it looks shiny. So now I'm going to start laying the varnish in between those two marks I just did and I'll blend it in here in just a second. So just like we did on the bulkhead wall before, we're going to blend this from the edge up to the center, and we're going to do this in each, uh, in each direction from that edge. So again, if we go the other way, we'll build up a small layer of varnish right at that lip, and it won't have that nice crisp line that the mill workers put into this door panel. So we'll just blend this real nice. And I am barely putting any weight on that brush because I don't want to lose that uh, that coat of varnish or wipe it off. I'm really just looking to blend it so you don't see the brush strokes. That's it. Now it's time to blend this in. So again, we start at the edge and work our way gently up the wood. Not applying much pressure at all, you'll see. Same thing down this side direction. If when you pull the brush across the wood, you feel the brush sort of jump along like it just did on that last stroke, it just means that it's a little too dry and we want to add just a little bit more varnish and make sure that that brush doesn't jump. Unfortunately, when it jumps, it leaves a really rough mark that we don't want to see on that door. This piece right here is, uh, you know, I, sh I showed you the teak and holly sole before. There's a couple of sections along the boat where the hull starts to go up at an angle. So the, the, if you can imagine, the floor is pointed and the hull starts to curve up before it hits a bulkhead wall. This is a piece that goes right in there. This boat doesn't have teak and holly in those small sections. Um, it was uh, it was rotted out. It was delaminated, old plywood from 33 years ago now, because this is a 1978 boat. So I just took basically just um, uh, birch plywood, uh, grade AC. I did not use marine grade in this particular case. Um, probably should have. Just opted not to because I like the finish much better on it. It's relatively easy to replace. If in 10 years this piece has to be replaced, it's a pretty easy fix. Um, but again, this is stained with a mahogany stain, that's really what it looks like. Stained with a mahogany stain, sealed, and then coats of varnish. And you'll see that this has a pretty good look to it as well. And because it's on the floor, we'll definitely put quite a few coats on this one uh, for extra protection where we happen to step on the corners of it getting in and out of the bunk. Again, I'm, I'm laying the varnish on here, and I'll thin it out and spread it here in just a moment. What I'm trying not to do is run along this edge because this plywood is a little bit of a rough edge, and I don't want to I don't want to tear up the brush or get little pieces of this black foam brush into the varnish itself. All right, so that looks good. Time to do like we've done all these other ones, right? We start here and we, we feather it in. Hopefully the light's showing on the camera because you can actually see those strokes pretty well with the light in front of the light up here, which is a good place to do it when you're varnishing. It gives you good visibility. All right, so once I've done that, I kind of hold it up here and make sure it looks good, and it does. So in the end, what I hope is that this shows it's really not that difficult to do this varnish, right? I happen to be doing this stuff in the shop. This could easily be done in the boat. And don't let it scare you with the amount of wood you have down below. You can start small, do a section, see some good results right there, and move to the next. And you can do this slightly over time. Once this bed is established on all this varnish, um, if this were top sides, about every year or so, I would probably do a light sanding and put another two coats on once it's taped. Uh, down below, my last boat, I had I'd coated it like this, and, and four years later when we sold the boat, it was still in really good shape. 
no, no need to redo any of the varnish. So I suspect you could probably get a good eight to ten years in the bottom of your boat if it's truly, uh, you know, if it's truly waterproof and and taken care of. So I hope you find this helpful. Uh, if so, please like the video, and uh, hopefully we'll be posting more soon. Thanks. And again, I want to thank you. This is Gil from the sailing vessel Last Affair.